reasonable explanation is, is that for some reason, if dinosaurs are really dinosaurs and not something else, right? I mean, it's possible, right, that there's something else. If dinosaurs are really dinosaurs, we have found fossilized mammals also, right? Just not as many. I mean, it's crazy how many more quote-unquote dinosaur bones that we found, if, if they all really are, right? And I question that sometimes. I, I sometimes wonder if these things aren't maybe extinct mammals, mm -hmm. right? And just, just mammals. Um, so, uh, uh, so I think, I think uh, that there were um, quite possibly, uh, quite possibly many dinosaurs that were extinct before Noah and the flood. I think that there is very possibly um, dinosaurs that were on the ark. I don't have a problem with that at all. The, the ark was gigantic. The ark did not have, I mean, it did not have two tigers and two lions and two pumas and two, right? Because realistically it had two cats. There were two felines on the ark. And... What are you guys doing? A safety committee. Safety tour. Oh, right, how need, fun. You're leaning back in your chair. You right? need, uh, <laughs> you might fall asleep. You <laughs> need, uh, you need like safety vests and hard hats and <laughs> you should be singing the safety dance song. Oh, no. <laughs> there you go. Actually, please don't. Um, so, uh, uh, so I think there's a lot of things, even with dinosaurs, that we are good with and can explain. Um, the other thing is, at the time of the flood, um, it would make a lot of sense that simpler organisms were in lower layers of the sediment as it built up, right? Um, I also, uh, I also think that, uh, oh, I said already. I, I, I feel like it's very possible that there were some already extinct versions. I think a lot of, I think a lot of versions of dinosaurs are the same dinosaurs at different stages. Um, I don't really have a problem with even giantism. I, I honestly believe, I honestly believe that uh, Adam and Eve were probably 12, 15 feet tall. I, I think they were giants. And, and I think there's, uh, I think there's actually biblical, biblical reasoning behind that, right? So Goliath, who's nine feet tall, right? Goliath with David and Goliath. Now this is a, this is a, few thousand years, a handful of thousand years, um, since the time of the flood. Um, but uh, uh, Goliath is a throwback to when, when I think people were larger. Um, and we see this, there's like a cumulative effect of sin. As, as time went on, Sin has this cumulative effect and makes things worse. I think people are not as smart today as they once were. I, I mean, we look back. We look back at what the Egyptians did, and we have no idea how they did the things that we did. How, how they we, they did the things that they did. There was there was an intelligence that's just not just not present anymore. I mean, we have a lot of knowledge. We have a lot of technology. We we've, we've figured out how to do a lot of things, and with all of that. We cannot do things that they did. I mean, it, it's it's crazy. It's crazy uh, thinking about that. So, I mean, even then into the Middle Ages, right? Uh, none of us, probably not even Avery, would fit into a suit of armor from the Middle Ages. Because, because humanity had diminished so much, right? Now, Medical technology has made it so that we are taller and healthier and bigger, right, and and better nutrition and all of that, and so it's sort of uh, it's sort of arrested some of that effect. But but I have no problem. I mean, uh, Andre the Giant. Yeah, are you guys familiar with Andre the Giant, right? Um, he was a lumbering oaf of a man. I mean, he he did not have any athletic prowess or whatever, and he was only what. Uh, short of eight feet, wasn't he? Um, a little bit short of eight feet, maybe. Goliath is nine feet or taller, and he has military and athletic prowess. How is that even possible? There is nobody, nobody who's who's ever been that tall in modern day that is anything except a problem health-wise, right? 
So, so things have changed radically, and I think that's I think that's all part and parcel too, right? God's good creation falls, but I think it really deteriorates over time, and, and that's why I think at the flood, I, I think things had gotten horribly, <clears throat> horribly bad for creation up to the flood, and then and then the flood happens, and the flood the flood maybe calms things down. Um, the flood maybe even takes a, uh, uh, a vapor canopy away from the earth, right? We, we found, I mean, fossilized ferns in Antarctica. How oh, is that even stinking possible, right? I mean, <clears throat> and so, uh, I mean, a global temperature, uh, uh, um, uh, an existence that aided in people living longer, uh, growing larger, I mean, I think all of that works well. I just don't think the dinosaurs could have been wiped out before Adam and Eve fell into sin. But but I mean were they wiped out other ways? Is is some of the is some of the fossil fossilization and sedimentation that that we see today maybe not from the flood, but maybe from some of the cataclysms that were happening between creation and the flood? I think that's incredibly po possible. I, I think it's incredibly possible that there were um, uh, I don't know, uh, flooding and earthquakes and mountains being formed and sedimentation happening. I think a lot of that could have happened between creation and the flood. And if the generations are correct, that time was not very long. Um, Adam would have still been alive uh, to know Mo Noah's father Lamech or, or maybe... Maybe Lamech's father. Adam, Adam would have still been alive. <clears throat> so you're only talking, I mean, you're talking like a, a, a thousand years between creation and the flood. A thousand years. It isn't a lot. But, but um, this, is also, this is also why I contend we don't find humans, we don't find humans in the, in the fossil record hardly ever because they were all located in one place. And... All of the humans would have been swimming for fury's sake until they were no longer able to swim and then drowned. And they would have all been in one place, right? Because that's how Scripture describes it. People were in one place. Um, so I think that's why we don't find humans in the fossil record. So I don't really have a problem with not, you know, finding a dinosaur and a human together. That would be a spectacular find. It would just be, it would be like the nail on the coffin of evolution. It would just be spectacular. But, it, but it, I think the only way to find that is to find wherever humans were at the beginning, right? I mean, if that's in the uh, Mesopotamia area. But it may not even be there. I mean, it could have been anywhere on the land masses that exist now, or maybe even a land mass that doesn't even exist anymore, ultimately. Um, They're all in the Marianas Trench. Right? I mean, it, it, could be, it could be that there is a location on Earth where there are layers of dinosaurs and humans together. I mean, it's very possible. So I don't know. I don't think, uh, I don't think we have to go to an extreme and say that God wiped out and there was a cataclysmic event and uh, that's why there were no dinosaurs. I, 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 uh, I, I think there's every possibility that they were on the ark. I think there's enough... Um, there's actually enough um, modern day evidence that dinosaurs have existed until recently, right? I mean, uh, all of the medieval, all of the medieval legends of, of dragons. There's no way those aren't based on actual animals. Um, there are some ancient records. There are some ancient records of uh, uh, the Chinese riding giant lizards in battle. <laughs> like what what the heck is that right I mean we know uh, uh, we know that uh, uh, there were mastodons in America I mean there are some uh, written accounts that up until the 1600s there were still some mastodons in North America um, so uh, uh, there are uh, tribes there's a tribe in Africa in the early 1900s, some exploration, new tribe in Africa, um, drew 
brontosaurus type creature. I mean, how would they know what anything like that looked like without actually seeing one in the jungle? And they they claim that um, this thing lived in the jungle, right? Mm -hmm. So I don't I don't have a problem with with thinking that there quite possibly were dinosaurs until recent times, right? And for whatever reason, whether they were hunted for food or whatever over the course of time, maybe uh, maybe something. Uh, Something happened to wipe them out. I mean, who who knows? But uh, I just I don't think we have to say that there was a God started over. We would we would not want to go there ultimately because um, that that's just that problem with death before sin, death before sin. So um, I think uh, the picture of Revelation twenty one twenty two is that uh, this this creation is gone. It's not a found. The only foundation for the new creation is that. Um, Maybe there will be animals, plants. I, you know, I don't know what it's going to have, right? Uh, um, but we also know it's going to be different than the uh, than this creation because you know Revelation says no sun, no moon, no stars because Jesus will be the light, right? We won't need um, God from eternity didn't need the sun, moon, and stars. So um, why in the new creation? On the last day, would we need the sun, the moon, and the stars either, right? So, what does that look like? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, or will there be animals? I, I don't know. Will your puppy be there? <laughs> I, possibly. Possibly. No promise in scripture, but but uh, will there be animals? Quite possibly. Will there be animals that we know? Will we finally get to see what the dinosaurs look like? Maybe. Uh, maybe there will be all new creatures that God creates, right? Uh, uh, I just, uh, right, there's a lot that we don't know about the new creation, but we know that it's going to be the dwelling place of God and man, so so there's not, the, the current separation between heaven and earth will not exist anymore. We will dwell with the angels, we will dwell with God, um, and, uh, and no sun and moon and stars, and uh, um, no sin, no death, no anything like that, so... I don't know if that answers any of your questions, but I think I think there isn't a there isn't going to be a clean slate on the foundation of creation. I, the present creation is swept away, is what Jesus says. Present creation will be swept away. All right. Um, sorry, that was long. I I love I love talking about that stuff because it's just uh, it's so cool to think about and it's so cool to look at the evidence that we have and and. Uh, the evidence that we don't have and the things that we know and the things that we suspect and the things that we really don't know and really can't answer and um, I would love answers and uh, I think the good news for us is that uh, uh, on the last day um, at the new creation uh, there are two options for us will we either know all the mysteries of this present creation or we won't care mm -hmm. I really hope it's the first one, <laughs> right? I hope it's the first one. I, I really want to know uh, all the things that God created. I think he cares about his creation, though. So I think, I think we'll just know. We'll just know everything. We'll know every creature that he created and every, every, uh, every facet of, uh, of uh, the things that are extinct and, and, and how, how, uh, how things, um, not evolved, but... Um, um, uh, crap, what's the word? Uh, uh, when a, when, when a, a lion becomes a tiger, um, adaptation, right? Oh. All of the adaptations that animals have ever gone through, and see and see all of the all the things, right? See that that we would maybe know the the felines that God created, and the canine that God oh. created, and then all that genetic diversity that, uh, right? And we know that that's how God created, right? Because um, there's over 400 breeds of dogs today, and they all come from a common ancestor. It's like, how the heck does that even happen? Well, because God created an unbelievable amount of genetic diversity when he created things. And so from, from these few things that God creates comes everything else because of the genetic diversity. So it's really, I mean, marvelous. Uh, creation is just marvelous and, and uh, um uh, full of wonder and awe that you know that God does all of this simply through a command. Let there be birds in the heavens. And 
everything, all the flying creatures, right? It's just so cool. All right, other questions or comments? All right. I know that not everything can be satisfying, so. Um, well, I, think, I think it's the flip side of that. Um, when you talk about, I'd say, the tension between science and faith, you look at some of the fundamental questions. If you were trying, if you were looking at it from a non-legal lens and go back to the kind of simplest question, chicken or the egg, the problem with almost anything, Big Bang, is there is a start that you can't claim even in that. And so you immediately go to the, we have no way of understanding this. So there's something greater that we have no ability to understand ourselves. Right. And, and, the, and, the, and the people that don't recognize that are denying the obvious. Mm -hmm. They're denying the obvious. And it's a, there's a, uh, there's a book. I forget what the book is called. I had it and I loaned it to somebody and I never got it back. <laughs> <laughs> So that, that happens to me a lot of times. Um, don't do that, right? And you'll promise that you don't do that to yourself and you'll still do it. Just have them order it on Amazon. Don't give them your book. Um, but it's like, uh, uh, why, why 25 top scientists um, don't believe in evolution or something like that? I, I, don't, I don't know what the title is even. But it, uh, it goes to uh, different scientists who don't necessarily believe in the Christian God but recognize that evolution does not answer, answer the question of why everything exists. And, and, and science drives, even secular scientists, drives them to a higher power, to something else that did it. Um, and and it's, uh, I, I, think it's, I think it's the reason why uh, some people believe in this uh, like ancient alien stuff that seeded the planet because that at least answers the question of that you can't answer. Where did it all come from? Now there's a f felicitous problem, right? Because um, then where did they come from? Where, yeah, same, yeah, same, yeah. Concern. Yeah. where did they get the same concern? <laughs> but but they don't think that far ahead, right? So ancient aliens takes care of that problem of of who started it, right? And um, uh, uh, it's interesting, um, uh, but higher level scientists. Um, recognize that evolution is not the answer. And, and many, many have set evolution aside, even though there's no answer as to what, what um, begins it, but they know that it just can't be. Uh, life from non-life, I've, I've got a great video, I always show it to my confirmation kids, um, and, and it's a, uh, it, it's a, uh, uh, shoot, I forget what it's called, but it's a great video because they do, uh, they do, uh, Big Bang and the ridiculousness of the Big Bang, and just the uh, uh, yeah the ridiculousness of the Big Bang, and then they do uh, life from non-life. So if you're able to do life from non-life, this is what it would look like, and this is the statistical probability, and it's such a unbelievably small statistical probability that it's it's zero. I mean, it's zero. It just can't happen. It can't happen mathematically. It can't happen science-wise. It just, you can't get life from non-life. But then, then what's cool about the video, it, it just sort of says, well, okay, so if you got life from non-life, what's, what's, uh, what's the potential of getting more complex life from less complex life, right? So let's start with life. Mm -hmm. Can you even do that? And, and again, it, mathematically, it's impossible. And scientifically, it's impossible, and it just doesn't work. And it, uh, uh, and I think there's more and more scientists that are recognizing that, and and at least at least being honest that evolution can't answer the question. Evolution doesn't work. But even Darwin said that at the end of his life. Darwin was like, "Just be great if it worked," but it doesn't work. Darwin recognized.